An oil and gas producer says flooding in its Calgary office is hampering cleanup at a pipeline rupture east of Peace River. Penn West Exploration says the biggest problem is communications. The leak dumped 5,000 litres of oil and up to 600 cubic metres of produced water over two and a half square kilometres of muskeg. Alberta Environment says it is satisfied with company management of the leak. But people living on the nearby Lubicon Lake First Nation fear the spill is bigger. Garrett Tomlinson is the communications and industry liaison for the Lubicon Lake Nation. Welcome to Alberta Primetime, Garrett. Thank you. The flooding in Calgary is affecting the coordination of cleanup, according to Penn West Exploration. Their offices have been underwater. What do you believe needs to be done to ensure that the site is still being properly assessed, contained and cleaned up by people in northern Alberta? You know, the biggest thing that we focus on as a First Nation, the biggest thing that Chief Aminiak has tried to stress to all companies in spills in the past and for this one, is that we have to be actively involved in the cleanup. That way we know it's done not only to Alberta standards, but it's done to the standards of the Lubicon First Nation as well. That's a primary concern for us, is to make sure that we can get that land as close to uh, the condition it was in before the spill, and we can use it in the ways we used it previously. And your members have been out to the site. This is where you live. Um, what do you estimate the damage to be and what are your concerns? Yeah, our council has been out to the site and they've inspected the site. They see uh, about 18,000 square meters of damage so far that's been uncovered. Um, it's a fairly sizable area given the size of the spill. Uh, our concern obviously is primarily on the produced uh, water as well as the oil content. Produced water will uh, toxicify the water uh, that's on the surface that it's already affecting and then the oil obviously is a, a much bigger uh, issue. We're going to have to excavate anywhere that land has been affected. So. Penn West has said that the site is contained, that provincial authorities, the government is on site. Do you think that the response has been adequate so far? There are some questions about that. Council did have questions as to whether or not this has been enough, whether they've done enough uh, in a timely manner. And part of the questions that are coming from that is the fact that Penn West knew about this spill on Wednesday and we didn't find out until Saturday evening. That raises a lot of questions as, okay, what happened in that three days? Did we just stand around and watch it or were we con cleaning it up or containing it? What were we doing? And we don't have those answers because they weren't in contact with us. Is there a history of this kind of thing, perhaps a history of mistrust and skepticism? You know, absolutely there is, especially given the 2011 plane spill, which spilled millions of litres of oil on Lubicon land. And the problem then was communication. They didn't come to tell us. We had to learn it from the government. We didn't learn it from the oil companies directly. And what we got from the government then was a promise that, you know what, this is going to be different. If this ever happens again, things will be different. And what we're seeing is that maybe it isn't so much different. Broken promises. Do you feel that as Albertans you're not considered equally as residents of the province because you're a First Nation? You know, I don't know if it's a systematic uh, inequality, but there are differences. Uh, First Nations, for example, aren't given the same treatment as, say, a farmer would be. If there was an oil spill on the edge of a farmer's land, the first thing an oil company would do is go and tell him and explain to him what's going to be happening so they'd be comfortable. And we don't necessarily see that, see that same approach from oil companies in the government. You're also far away. There aren't a lot of cameras where people are living near this spill. It's a remote community that a lot of Albertans haven't been exposed to. Does that sometimes harm the voice you're trying to raise, the squeaky wheel you're trying to be? Often it does. I mean, it, it's there was a time where Chief of Minneac was very prominent in the press, and even then he had to travel a long ways to do it. He was in Europe, he was all across Canada to try and make sure we got the attention that we needed to make sure our issues were brought to light, and that hasn't changed, and the oil companies are aware of that. They'll release press releases at 8 o'clock on a Friday night to try and make sure they fly under the radar and make sure no one notices, but now we're, we're learning to adapt and learning to use that technology to make sure that we're making them responsible for their actions. Are they all the same? Are, are some good? Some experiences not so good? We can't say they're all the same. It's not fair to paint them all the same brush. Yeah. Some, are, some are particularly uh, awful, um, to not mince words, and some of them do make an effort to try and uh, cooperate and try and be as open and transparent as possible, but those are the minority. How do you cope with the frustration of not feeling heard? It, you know, we, we've tried to be patient with the governments, we've tried to be patient with oil companies, but at the end of the day, 
Look, at two weeks ago, we filed a $700 million lawsuit against the province of Alberta and Canada for oil exploration without consent because they've never signed treaty. So for us, to, the frustration is coming to a boil. And now on these lands, we say that we've never given them permission to put oil development on in the first place. Now we have a spill that's permanently affecting the land that belongs to us. It never belonged to the government. It never belonged to the oil company in the first place. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the oil, and everybody understands the damage that that can do to an environment when it's spilled from a pipeline. That's happened. But also the produced water, that's sort of an innocuous sounding name for something that is perhaps more toxic, salty produced water. What is that? What is the effect on the land? Essentially what it is is it's uh, water that's high in salt and sulfur that's produced out of oil wells that comes with uh, oil. Um, normally what happens with that water is it's injected back into that oil formation that it came out of so it doesn't do any harm. If it gets into the fresh water, it contaminates fresh water and surface land. It'll actually kill plants if it's spilled on it. Um, so for us, it's, they say pr produced water and it does sound uh, fairly innocuous, but it is fairly dangerous and it is wastewater in effect. So we do need to see that that's cleaned up as well. We know that you're in contact with Penn West Exploration. There is a cleanup underway. We certainly don't want to give anyone the wrong impression. And we did try to reach the company. We're unable, unfortunately, uh, to get in contact with anyone at Penn West before this interview. Uh, but Garrett, thank you very much for joining us and sharing. My pleasure. Garrett Tomlin is communications and industry liaison for the Lubicon Lake First Nation.